What is up, players? We're about to stay up in this mug. Welcome to my final video on how to paint a Menoth Cinerator. So, the paints you're going to need are P3 Paints Menoth Base, Ceramite White, I think we're actually using Menoth Highlight White, Rune Fang Steel, Dark Reaper, Rust Gray, What else are we using? The wash is Seraphim Sepia. We're also using some Screamer Pink and Emperor's Children. So here's our finished model. What I didn't um, show was the Vallejo Liquid Gold model. It's uh, what gives us that really great yellow gold effect on all of the gold areas. And that is, I believe it's Rich Gold from Vallejo, the Liquid Gold series. Most of the gold series, or most of the gold in that series can be used and is really, really good. Um, the tricky thing is that because it's an enamel paint, you want to make sure that you have a good cleaner for your brush when you use it. So um, Liquitex makes a good brush cleaner, I think. And uh, there, there's some other companies that make some good brush cleaners, but you want to make sure that it's uh, you get a cleaner for your brush that is going to work with your uh, synthetic brushes, if you're using synthetic brushes, and will uh, get that enamel paint off. You can't just put your, your paintbrush into a cup of water and splish it around like you can with water-based acrylic paints because it's uh, the, the paint will stick to the bristles. Okay, so what I'm doing with the, my Seraphim Sepia is a technique that I call lining. It's not just me. I think it's, it's a pretty common... Uh, technique and basically all we're doing is taking the wash and we're creating shadows where the uh, or lines of shade where the two separate um, surfaces meet again you might notice if you haven't been watching my tutorials recently that there is no music and that's because the music is on a separate video you just play it in the background or uh, you can download it as an mp3 if you want to do that, there's this great website called YouTube to MP3, and or you just Google that YouTube to MP3, and then you can download that video, uh, put that video's link into the into the the little thing there, and then it'll create a file that you can download, put it on your computer, and then you can have Warboss tutorial background music whenever you want to paint. Hey, listen to it when you're in the car, driving to work, or taking a shower or doing your gardening or whatever you want. So basically I'm taking my Seraphim Sepia and I'm painting it wherever the plates meet and create those hard edges because <clears throat> with Menoff White Highlight, it's such a bright, stark, contrasting highlight color that if you paint it a little bit too close to that pink shoulder pad rim, then uh, there's not going to be any shade left. All that seraphim sepia is going to be gone. So we're just redoing the shade. And uh, the, another great thing you can do with that is if you put a lot into the, the corners and the right, right where the two surfaces meet, you can also pull the color towards the center and create a little bit more of a shadow rather than just a line. So I'm kind of doing that over here with the gauntlet. I'm painting the back lower half of the gauntlet with more Seraphim Sepia instead of just doing the line. And then it creates a little bit of a shadow there. And again, Seraphim Sepia is such a great shade when you're working off of a color like this uh, creamy off-white bone ivory. So uh, I, I definitely recommend it if you are painting anything like another like a Warhammer 30k model that it would look great off of is the Death Guard color scheme. I know I, I've done when I've done Death Guard in their 30k color scheme in the past I've done their armor in very much the same way with a creamy bone white color shaded with Seraphim Sepia and then highlighted back up so that it, it, it gives the impression of white while being just a little bit slightly more ivory and cream in tone. But having a, a, a brush with a very small thin point is going to help you a lot. You don't want to get your wash all over the place. This isn't like the washing sh uh, or the shade step 
we are really just kind of accentuating the brighter colors by lining in those um, darker areas. So now to help us on the flip side of that, we're going to take our Menoth White Highlight. And this is uh, the brightest highlight color we're going to do. And I'm going to start at the center of all of my areas here. And I'm going to pull the color out towards the sides. And the great thing is that you start where you think the the area is going to be the lightest. So I'm going to start kind of at, in, at the center of the armor plates. Um, there you can see there's a little bit of shade in the lower half that kind of dried in a very, I guess, uh, tricky <clears throat> kind of pattern there. So I'm just laying down some paint, some color, and then spreading it off to the side there. Here in the shield, I'm going to start kind of close towards the center. And like I said, feather the paint out towards the lined uh, shadows. And uh, by doing that, you ensure a nice, clean paint job. I think one of my one of my driving philosophies as a painter, as an artist, is to create clean transitions of color. So basically, that means trying to um, trying to limit the amount of I guess overflow in the shades, if uh, if if you can, and just keeping everything where it's supposed to be, like painting in the lines. Okay, in this next section, what I'm doing is I'm taking my rust gray and I'm watering it down. I'm thinning it down a lot. You can either use uh, Lamian Medium, which is a Games Workshop product, and I think one of their lesser known, lesser um, appreciated colors. And uh, it's great at separating the pigments of your paint and allowing you to move it around your model. And you have great brush control with it. You, it, it flows really, really well for most layer paints. Lamian Medium, if you can add that to your arsenal. That is definitely a product that I, I highly uh, recommend. It basically turns your layer paints into shades or washes. You can also thin your paint with water. Just get it on a wet palette, add maybe 75% water to 25% paint, maybe even, even more water, because you really want to, to separate the pigment and make it so that it, it is not, um, what's the word? It does not have any thickness at all. It's really just uh, a, a shaded kind of water consistency. So what I'm doing is I'm creating shadows in the white folds of the robe that he's wearing. The reason we're going with rust gray instead of like a sepia is because we want the robes to look very clean, very white and uh, we're going to do that by creating blue shadows. So this could also work if you have, for instance, high elves or some kind of faction where the uh, robes need to be very crisp and clean, which is not something that you um, get a lot of in miniature wargaming. A lot of times the, the models are meant to look uh, very grungy and dirty and, um, you know, weathered and stained. So if you want something or if you're painting something like high elves like i mentioned or uh in 40k i guess eldar some of the uh, eldar farseers where their robes have to be very clean and crisp then uh shading with blue and shades of blue is is a great way to go and um there's other paint thinners too as well that you can use that are on the market that uh can kind of thin down your pigments and make it so that it's like a wash um, AK Interactive, I think MIG also creates White Spirit, which is a product that I didn't even know about until I was reading Forge World's Masterclass Volume 1 hardback book, which is a fantastic resource. Some of the, the techniques are a little bit outdated because they're creating a lot of revolutionary products out there to do the uh, weathering effects, but still a great product if you want to go out and get your hands on it. That's the Forge World Masterclass How to Paint. Uh, I guess vehicles and dioramas part one and part two and there's some models in there too uh, Part one is really the one where I think you, you can get the most bang for your buck with their techniques They teach you hairspray techniques and um, lots of weathering and pigments. It helps if you have an airbrush though So they, they use white spirit a lot What I'm doing now is I'm taking my dark reaper and I've thinned it down with my Lamian medium and I'm painting the deepest recesses of the folds. I'm leaving the rust gray kind of up, up on the sides and I'm really just 
trying to aim towards the centers of all of the folds in the robes because we, we're creating the deeper shadows now. Dark Reaper is a very uh, good color to make that second shade, the darker shade. And that way you can see the rust gray is kind of blunt intermediate step. And moving here towards the front now, doing the same thing, just getting right into the darkest shadows there. And I love the way the model looks right now. I'm very happy with it as uh, at this stage. You could really be proud of just putting it on your table at this point, but we're gonna keep going. And uh, like I said, my big thing is transitioning the colors, keeping the paint in between the lines, going back, fixing your mistakes, and cleaning everything up. And the way we're gonna clean this up is we're gonna take our ceramide white and we're not gonna thin this down. This we want it to be very uh, thick and full, full flavored, full bodied, I guess you could say. Uh, we don't want it to spread out and to um, show the, uh, the rust gray underneath. We wanna lay it down and then spread it down across the model using the brush. So you can see I'm not just slapping the paint down in one or two brush strokes. I'm doing short brush strokes almost at a diagonal angle. When you're doing something like cloth or organic things like skin or bone, then um, when you highlight, I found an effective way of doing the highlights are in short diagonal strokes. Because even if you don't see the individual brush strokes, you can uh, kind of get a sense for the feel of the movement of the cloth. It's good practice for you as a painter because uh, I, I think it's good to follow the lines of the model, but almost at a diagonal. And um, it, it looks good. It actually doesn't even have to just be for organic things. You could do it for like a Necron or Space Marine armor. I just found that when you're doing something like robes or um, bone or skin, that you, uh, when you highlight in this fashion, it creates very nice natural lines of, uh, of, of lighter color over the darker colors. So I'm really trying to build up this ceramite white color. Over here on his right side, you can see that rust gray got a little bit too high up. So I'm gonna start with where I think the ceramite white should be the brightest. That's like right down the center of that, that little flap of cloth there. And I'm just really dragging the color down down the sides. So you're kind of blocked from, from seeing what I'm doing right there. But here, I'm starting at the center and I'm pulling the color down either side, leaving the rust gray, and then down into the center, the Dark Reaper. And you wanna do maybe two or even three layers of this. Uh, that way you really get to build up that bright, pure white color. And uh, not only that, but you can um, kind of create that smoother perception and a little bit more of that, that illusion of depth by thinning down the paint and dragging it down towards the sides. Which you can see here I'm doing right now. The paint is really thinned down on my brush, so I'm basically just saying, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna push it down the sides of the folds of cloth, and uh, have it blending into the rust gray just a little bit to show that transition. So I mean, there you, here we're looking at two very separate, distinct colors. You've got the ivory bone color, which kind of shades to a, a dark, dirty brown. And uh, to me, that really signifies like that uh, old artifact looking very, very uh, well-worn, well-used, but very um, holy looking, I guess, artifact of the armor. And then the very clean and looks like it's washed all the time and, uh, and very purified all the time kind of robes where they, they look very crisp and freshly off out of the uh, the holy waters of the holy Menoth washing machine and ready to be worn. Beautiful. Okay, at this point, we are going to get into our liquid gold. So it's rich gold. This is the color that we're using, rich gold from Vallejo's liquid gold. And like I said before, it is an enamel paint. 
which means that you really need to be careful when you're cleaning it and you really need to be careful when you're done painting that you do not just let the paint sit on your bristles you got to get them off the bristles you got to clean them with the an appropriate um, enamel cleaner like I said you can use a brush cleaner that you can get from uh, any art store because most most art stores like Michaels or uh, Ben Franklin's we had in Hawaii they they sell these painting materials for artists and um, they sell like enamel paints and the cleaners for them so you want to get the the cleaner for enamel paints if you don't have that you can also use a, a good like rubbing alcohol, isopropyl alcohol will also work for this. Um, basically, it's it's really easy to to destroy your brushes if you do not take proper care of them when using an enamel paint. It's a lot easier to kind of fudge it and futz it with the acrylic paints because they're water based. But enamel paints very tricky, great to use. You have a great finished product, but um, they're, they're a lot easier to mess up your brushes with if you're not careful. Yeah, you can really see though that the uh, gold color of the Rich Gold, the Vallejo Gold series is just on a whole nother level from the Games Workshop ones. I think it, it has a lot to do with the way it covers. The Games Workshop, like Gehenna's Gold, the Auric Armor Gold, um, while it looks okay, I think it just it doesn't cover that well across the model. It, it kind of thins and there's a little bit of an oily and watery look quality to it. So I think that that might have a lot to do with why I, I don't prefer it as much. I think if it covered as well as, as this enamel paint did, then, then I, I'd think differently. Okay, so I'm... I, I painted the front of the shield, I painted that back plate right, right over his butt. Now I'm going in and I'm getting the gold edges on his leg armor, right under his, uh, his shoulder armor. There's this tricky part, it's the gold within the, uh, in between the red armor plates on his shoulder. So the tricky thing is that if you make a mistake, you have to go back with the uh, Emperor's Children slash Screamer Pink combination. And I, I think that's okay because there are so many gold areas to paint on the model. There's the gold studs right over there, over the back butt plate. You've got the um, all the gold detailing on the sword, the back and the front of the sword, the edges of um, all of the, the rims on the front of the model as well. There's a lot of gold detail on this model, the, the helmet piece, um, all those little gold studs, like I said. So, so don't be afraid if you make a mistake, and be patient with yourself because chances are it's very, very likely because that gold detailing is is set very deeply inside the um, sculpted rims of the shoulder pads. Chances are you're probably going to get some of that gold paint on the red areas. So don't be discouraged, and uh, it's not going to be perfect. There's no perfect paint job. But uh, if you make a mistake, you're just going to go back and fix it in the next step, which is totally acceptable. The good thing also about having to go back to another color to clean up a mistake that you just made is that it's an opportunity for you to find and clean up a mistake you might have made you know, a long time ago and you didn't even notice. Maybe that pink uh, red of the shoulder pad is uh, maybe you missed an angle and it's completely unpainted or maybe you got it onto some of the white body armor and you hadn't even noticed it but yeah it's a great great way to to force yourself to look over your model one more time and say okay I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna fix what I missed so I am really turning around on these models I think I was uh, I've I had like a a very <laughs> revelatory moment today when when I was in the hobby shop and I was looking at the No Quarter magazine, and I just thought you know I've never really looked into these magazines before. I've seen them next to the well, they're not right next to the White Dwarfs, but in the War Machine Horde section, I would see them the new issues, and not many people. I don't think many people buy the magazines. Un unless the the community is is very strong and healthy, but most of the Warhammer communities that I've been into, 
back home in Hawaii here in California, they don't have a, a very large following, at least the ones that I see that, that, that read through the magazines, that talk about the magazines on YouTube. So I thought I'll just pick it up and check it out and see, see what it's all about. And there is a huge wealth of information and uh, inspiration in those pages. You've got artwork and uh, co conceptual art for new products coming out, as well as artist interpretations of alternate color schemes, all sorts of great stuff in there. So I highly recommend you find it. I think they're also online as well. They, they post a lot of the uh, pictures and articles and uh, online magazine uh, articles on Facebook and um, you know everywhere else like that. So I think if you find the the correct um, the correct I guess resource out there, the right resource for you, and you know I'm I'm a pretty I, I consider myself a pretty level-headed uh, hobbyist and gamer and painter. And you know, once I saw the art of of the the War Machine figures, then I was like, okay, all right, I might have been wrong about about this game and the aesthetic. So, all right, moving on. I rambled enough. You'll notice that I didn't paint the gold into the right shoulder pad. I am going to come back and do that, but I noticed that I, I did screw up a little bit. So I'm going back to my Screamer paint now, and I'm just looking for all the areas that I missed or that I, I got the gold paint onto, and I'm just going to fix it up just a little bit. Yeah, I think this is where I noticed that I, I forgot to, to paint the gold into the, the shoulder pad there. So, going back. We've got to go back, Marty. It's your kids. They don't know how to paint. All right, so, yeah, there we go. Just getting that gold paint in. Very tricky. Like I said, if you're not using a, a very fine detailed brush, um, if you're not holding your model steady, a lot of people say I have very steady hands, but you'll notice that I'm just kind of bracing the heel of my hand against the heel of my hand with the paintbrush. My right hand, I'm always bracing it against my left hand somewhere, either by the thumb or on the against the heel of the left hand. Um, it's, it's a very simple, easy beginner trick to learn. I'm basically pushing my forearms against the, the edge of the table. Well, I, I wouldn't say pushing, but resting. And then I'm holding the model in my left hand. And then with my right hand, with the paintbrush, I'm just bracing the heels of my hands together so that they're kind of in the pockets of each, uh, each hand is in the pocket of the other. And if you, if you have <clears throat> like this cork piece that I'm holding the model onto, you don't have to worry about your fingers, fingertips shaking as you're holding the base of the model. It really does take all of the guesswork out. In this case, I'm uh, um, painting Runefang steel onto the sword, onto all of the uh, silver bits that need to be painted. So like the spikes here on the back of his gauntlet. I don't have to be right up against the model for this detail work. So I'm resting my forearm of my right hand against the edge of the table. And having a cork base is so much, it, it really, takes a, a lot of the guesswork out of painting and uh, holding your model tight because uh, your model doesn't move. Your model will not move because you've got your hand comfortably wrapped around that cork base. A little bit of poster mounting putty, I think it's called. Stick your figure right on top of there and you don't have to worry about your, your model shaking again. I do have some friends who paint that uh, they're, they're, they're a little older. Uh, one of them has um, a condition where his hands shake really, really uh, noticeably. But um, once he started using these techniques, uh, he noticed a, a significant improvement in being able to paint. So um, I know stress, anxiety, uh, a lot of that is, is a factor as well. So make sure that when you paint, you're not hopped up on caffeine. Uh, you've, had, you've had enough rest or you're, you're not exhausted at least, and you're ready to paint, and you should be fine. With Runefang Steel now, I'm painting the silver, I guess, vent or screws, screw ports on his shield there. You've got four, two at the top, two at the bottom. And then you've also got silver, I guess, uh, borders at the top and at the bottom of the shield that is surrounded by the gold. I'm now painting silver into all of the screw ports on the armor. Remember, from the first video, we've got a lot there. 
and having that rune fang steel popping out from the shaded and the highlighted white and the red is really going to help tie your model together. So these are beautiful, beautiful models. I love building them up to look like they're these very reverent and holy warrior kind of things. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. It was a three-part process. I've had to stop and start uh, a bunch of times over. I finally figured out how to get rid of that, that weird hum. I think it was that something to do with the input volume that I was recording my dialogue at. But here's uh, one last go around of the model. I'm very happy that I got to finish it. I did all uh, five, the whole squad of these Protectorate of Menoth Cinerators, and I'm very pleased that they're done. Um, what am I doing? I think I'm just doing some last minute touch-ups here, but I want to thank you guys for watching. Check me out on Facebook or Twitter at Warboss Tay, and uh, you can check out my website, WarbossTayStudios.com, or email me for a commission, WarbossTayStudios at gmail.com. Thanks for watching, everybody. Stay tuned. I'm going to do some Cador Manowar Shock Troopers next. Hope you're having a great week, and we'll see you in the next video.